NVIDIA recently released their brand new DLSS 4.5 and based on reactions online, NVIDIA has imbued this new technology with arcane magic. I keep seeing posts online where people take footage that looks like oatmeal that's been vomited up by a dog and then they turn DLSS 4.5 on and it just turns into Brad Pitt's abs. Which immediately got me thinking, is this new DLSS 4.5 powerful enough to take the worst RTX graphics card that NVIDIA has ever made, the RTX 2050, and finally turn it into a high resolution gaming beast? Well, the answer is <laughs> more complicated than I was expecting. Now the RTX 2050, a graphics card that can only be found in laptop form, holds the prestigious title of worst performing RTX branded graphics card. And I'm really curious to see how this little turd of a graphics card plays with DLSS 4.5. Because on the one hand, the little RTX 2050 really needs aggressive upscaling technology for it to be able to handle demanding modern games. So it could benefit from better upscaling technology. The problem is, according to Nvidia themselves, this new model has a big performance penalty on older RTX graphics cards. So I'm curious to see if the performance trade-off is worth the higher fidelity. Now to start off, I want to see how this new Transformer 2 model runs on some hardware that it was meant to run on. So I've got an RTX 5050 in here to see kind of what the model does so that we can compare its performance to the RTX 2050. Now for our baseline run, I'm using ultra settings at 1440p with Cyberpunk, and here the 5050 is getting in the mid 40s. We're also getting pretty low CPU utilization, so our Ryzen 5 7600X seems to have reasonable headroom for extra performance from DLSS. I then turned on performance mode of the original Transformer model, so this is not the new DLSS yet, which not only gave us a massive boost in frame rate, but I actually forgot how good the original Transformer already looks. Even the original Transformer model at 1440p per performance looks surprisingly good. Like the detail on the fences and stuff. Now this is pretty difficult to show on YouTube, but aside from some slightly more aggressive flickering and light sources, flickering that's also there rendering at native resolution, Cyberpunk is quite a flickery game. But yeah, even the original Transformer model already looks really good even at performance settings. I then went into NVIDIA's drivers and enabled Preset M, which is apparently the less demanding of the two new DLSS presets. Just a quick note, every time you set a new preset, you have to restart the game, otherwise the preset doesn't apply properly. Now straight off the bat, even with a 50 series GPU, moving from the original Transformer model to Preset M loses us performance. We lose about 6 frames per second. It's not massive, but there is a penalty there. A penalty which gets even bigger when you step up to the more demanding Preset L. It costs us 10 frames per second, which means that Preset L running in performance mode gives us the same frame rate as the original Transformer model running in balanced. Yeah, this performance hit on a 50 series card does not bode well for the 2050. And then in terms of image quality, I'd say, yeah, Preset M looks a little bit better than the original Transformer model. It's a bit sharper, flickering in lights is better controlled, and maybe the smearing on fences is a bit better on the newer model. It's definitely an improvement, but it's not as big a jump as the original Transformer model was, in my opinion. I'd say visually the difference is the most noticeable going to the more demanding preset L. There is a noticeable increase in low-level detail perception, which makes it feel a lot less like you're using aggressive upscaling, which is really cool. But it still struggles with the dreaded fence smearing, and it does cost quite a lot of performance. Interesting when dropping the original Transformer model to balanced to match the frame rate with the preset L at performance, I feel like preset L still has the edge here. The gap is smaller, but it still looks a bit better, even though it's running at a lower resolution. So even with a 50 series GPU, a pretty losery 50 series GPU, but still, it cost us some performance using the new DLSS presets. So what's going to happen when we try out the RTX 2050? Well, to test it, I'm going to use my trusty HP Victus laptop, which not only has an RTX 2050 in it, but it's also got a Ryzen 5, 
I forgot the number because it's a really stupid name. Where is it? 7535HS. So hopefully our CPU won't also be a bottleneck when we try and push some high frame rate 1440p action with crazy DLSS. Let's give it a try. Now I'm also going to be testing the laptop 2050 at 1440p and we're going straight back to ultra. We're going to see if we can get ultra both playable and looking reasonable on the little 2050. So first we got to turn all of the upscaling off motion blur off there we go this is just so that we can see what we're working with Ooh, those cpu temps are nice to see just straight to 95. Ooh, yeah this is uh not going great dlss 4.5 really has its work cut out for it because we're gonna need a whole lot more frame rate before this is going to be playable. At which point I ran into some problems with the in-game settings not applying upscaling changes for some reason. Although looking back at it now, I think the reason why turning on DLSS didn't gain us any performance, because even with balanced DLSS, our pathetic 4 gigs of video memory was still blowing out our kneecaps. But either way, I ended up restarting the game and forcing all of the DLSS changes moving forward through the drivers, starting with preset at A running at ultra performance. Wow, look at that, 34 frames per second. And it doesn't look that horrible. I mean, it looks like some butt cheeks riddled ass, but it could have been worse. What's interesting is despite our massive increase in frame rate, Cyberpunk is still choking out our four gigs of video memory, which is gonna become a bit of a theme over the course of this testing. I then jumped up to preset J, which is the OG Transformer preset, which is a pretty big step up from what I was using before. Now again, in terms of frame rate, we're getting, I mean, I don't wanna say close to a playable experience here at 1440p Ultra, but the game feels just an order of magnitude better than it did just natively rendering at 1440p. Uh, but with our preset J, it's not looking too terrible. It doesn't look spectacular, but it's a huge step up over something like FSR 2 at even performance mode. So yeah, I mean, this is kind of impressive. And this isn't even the new preset. At which point I decided to switch back to the canned benchmarks so that we could get proper repeatable performance comparisons between the different models. Starting with our baseline native run, which gave us a whopping 10 frames per second, which no joke is actually much better than I was expecting it to run. I really do not think very highly of this graphics card. I then jumped up to ultra performance on the CNN model, which actually managed to run in the canned benchmark, giving us a huge performance jump over native range. Rendering. Interestingly, going from the original CNN model to OG Transformer model not only gave us much better visuals, we even got a small performance boost, which is nice. A performance bump which immediately completely evaporated the moment I switched to the new DLSS presets. Preset M lost us almost half of our frame rate. The 2050 clearly wants nothing to do with this new form of DLSS. However, interestingly, moving to the more demanding preset L barely lost us any additional frame rate, which I wasn't really expecting, although at this point we were still getting 24 frames per second. So that means running preset L at ultra performance gives us the same frame rate as using the OG transformer model in balanced, which is a significantly higher resolution. At which point I was curious to see what a different game would do. So I decided to switch over to Silent Hill 2 to see if we could save some Unreal Engine 5 smearing. In terms of settings, I decided to do 1440p high, starting off with no upscaling for some baseline action. Wow, this game is so gray. Even natively running at 1440p, it's kind of a smeary, blurry mess. Like, surely there's upscaling going on here. This game can't look this terrible. Oh, but no, never mind. It's the whole Unreal Engine 5 thing where the engine just breaks if there isn't upscaling on. DLSS balanced. That has given us quite a lot more frame rate, but the game still looks like a Roomba running over cat poo. Like this is, ugh. I then decided to try ultra performance DLSS to make the game at least feel a bit better. Okay, there we go. So with ultra performance, we finally got a reasonable feeling result, but movement looks so bad. Wow. 
And then to see how bad it could really get, I tried FSR 1 on performance mode. Oh yeah, there we go, that's some good stuff. I then moved to a spot near some fences to test the new DLSS model, but again, for a framework of reference, I started with the in-game DLSS model. Here, at 1440p with ultra performance, standard DLSS. The DLSS that just comes pre-baked in Silent Hill 2, we're getting about 30 frames per second, and that is what our movement near a fence looks like. Oh! Oh, something bad happened. This frame dip might again be our lovely video memory limitation rearing its ugly head. And then when trying to apply preset M, Silent Hill 2 just fell off the deep end. Despite restarting the game two times, the model just wouldn't apply, at least according to the drivers. But luckily, all I had to do to apply the preset was restart the game a third time. Good stuff. Okay, so here we have our preset M running, which... Almost looks like it's struggling with the fence more. And then there's our video memory limit. Like, is that better? I, I don't know. Preset L looked maybe marginally sharper, but even before the massive frame dip that happened with the other presets, it was running at 14 frames per second. But honestly, Silent Hill 2 was so broken on the 2050 that I don't know if any of these results mean anything. And with that very useful bit of information, what did we learn in today's video? Well, apparently NVIDIA was right. Their new DLSS model doesn't really like running on older graphics cards. It prefers running on all of those new graphics cards that they're currently in the process of not making anymore. Which seems very on brand for 2026 NVIDIA behavior. But anyway, with that bombshell, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next video, bye-bye.